Father's love, everyone, and welcome to the Daily Devotional for September 1st from Finders Keepers, Finders of Truth, Keepers of Faith. Today's quote, Don't be fooled. Jesus was a friend to sinners so they would listen and repent. He was not a friend of sin, allowing it to continue. He came to take away sin and to destroy the works of the devil who sinned from the beginning. This one's entitled, Sin or Not to Sin. Since believers are called saints and are commanded to cleanse themselves from all defilement of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness and the fear of God, how can many claim they don't have to stop living in sin? 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. How can they embrace the new sinner-sensitive hyper-grace that belittles sin and repentance? Since the fear of the Lord is to hate and turn away from evil, why do many walk in sin and compromise? Proverbs chapter 3 verse 7 be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Proverbs 8, chapter, or verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. Since the Spirit of God was given to deliver one from the power of sin, and the Word of God was given to cleanse one from defilement of sin, how is it that many undermine the seriousness of sin? Romans 8, verse 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Psalms 119, verses 9 and 11. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? by taking heed according to thy word. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Ephesians 5, 26 That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Since believers are commanded to be holy in all their behavior, to consider themselves to be dead to sin, why do they listen to those who turn the grace of our God into licentiousness and deny His grace that brings salvation from sin's power and condemnation? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 But as He which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Romans chapter 6, verse 11 Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jude, verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 6, verses 1 and 2 and 15. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. 1 John chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Romans chapter 6, verses 22 and 23. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, 
Ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end, everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Titus chapter 2 verse 11 For the grace of God to bring us salvation hath appeared to all men. Believers are commanded to resist every temptation, to walk by the Spirit and not carry out the desire of the flesh, to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, and to walk in the light and be cleansed from all sin. Yet many continue in their old ways, excusing themselves from pursuing holiness and sanctification. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. Galatians 5, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 and 9 But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This behavior results from reading Bibles rewritten by men or listening to the lies of the evil one who has sinned from the beginning. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8 He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Rather than being taught by the Holy Spirit to abide in the truth which sanctifies, they are being brainwashed by the evil spirit of the age. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27 But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even it is, hath taught you. Ye shall abide in him. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The devil prefers that we take holiness lightly rather than pursue holiness devoutly. He desires for people to remain unrepentant and held captive by him to do his will rather than become sorrowful over sin to the point of repentance leading to salvation and deliverance from sin. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 25 and 26 In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. Now I rejoice not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death.
The devil prefers that his children remain bound by the cords of sin rather than be set free and serve the Lord in freedom. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 22 His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself and he shall be holden with the cords of his sin. Luke chapter 4 verse 18 Jesus said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. John chapter 8, verses 31 through 36. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And a servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Galatians chapter 5 verses 1 and 13 Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. God has granted us everything pertaining to life and godliness. We are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to present our bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God which is our reasonable service of worship. Dying to sin is both a daily and a lifelong discipline. We call sanctification, without which no one will see the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. I hope this devotion blesses you. And I hope you're not fooled by the little lies of the enemy. What he has a lot of people preaching and believing today. Jesus was a friend to sinners so they would listen and repent. He was not a friend of sin, allowing it to continue. Jesus came to take away sin and to destroy the works of the devil, who was a sinner from the beginning. I hope you can fully understand how important this is. Yes, we slip. Yes, we stumble. The enemy's constantly trying to throw stumbling blocks in our way, whispering things in our ears. But I hope you don't willfully continue in sin like so many Christians today. Dying to sin is both a daily and a lifelong discipline. And only through the power of His Holy Spirit within us can we be sanctified. Because if we're not sanctified, we will not see the Lord. 
Don't forget to pray for the children, their fellow brothers and sisters around this world. And those still lost in the darkness, woefully sinning, so that they too can be set free. May our Father bless you, keep you, be gracious unto you, and give you peace. I'll see you next time.